Hi, my name is Orla and it's Blue. So recently I did something that I've been wanting to do for ages, which is start reading the books that have inspired some BTS songs. I started off with <laughs> I started off with Into the Magic Shop by Dr. James R. Doty. I was really, really worried about reading this book because he is a neurosurgeon and so I was afraid that it was going to be really heavy, really like dense sentences, but it was a very, very easy, attainable read. But if you like BTS and K-pop and want to see more videos like this, you might as well give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on the little bell notification. It is just a fun time on this channel. So I've been really, really struggling to get back into personal reading because I just finished my English degree. And so during that, I didn't really read anything for pleasure because it felt like if I wasn't reading something that was on my syllabus, I was like wasting time. This was such a such a wonderful read it was an amazing book i can tell why bts read it and felt compelled to write a song based on it i am going to go through a little bit about the book and a little bit about the song but what i will say is that although this inspired the although this book inspired this song i think that bts did a really really good job at like not just kind of regurgitating the book in a musical sense they really took the time to think about themselves and how they would want to write it and how they would want to tell the story themselves because this You don't need to read this to understand this but reading this is really really good <laughs> One of the things that I was most surprised about reading this book was that I Didn't expect magic shop to be a real place. I don't know why I thought that magic shop was just a metaphor I have never seen any reviews about this book I kind of stayed away from this book because I knew that I wanted to read it myself And I didn't want anybody else's opinion to influence my own I don't know why I did not think that Magic Shop was a real place, but it is. Okay, I just wanna say this is a really, really easy read. Don't be concerned if you're not the strongest reader because it is just very, very easy language. Now there will be some medical terms because he does put in some stories, but it's not, you don't need to understand because he will explain everything. He doesn't just put out big doctor words and just expect a lay person to know what they're talking about. It does have long chapters, like some like 30 page long chapters. That's not usually my liking. I like kind of 20 pages and under chapters, but even though the chapters were really long, they were very, very engaging. So it didn't feel very long. It didn't feel like, Ugh. It's 13 chapters and three parts. Now the first part of it was probably my favourite part of the book um, and that is the story of Magic Shop and how he came to the Magic Shop and the experiences that he had in there. So he was a very young child when this story starts but he had an extremely, extremely difficult childhood. Um, alcoholic, addict dad, um, mother who is so depressed she can't make it out of the bed through no fault of her own. I'm just going to say that there. And he just had a lot of anxiety in him. This life that he was brought into left him feeling very very anxious and also left him looking at a lot of other people and kind of yearning for what they had so like the rich people are happy because they have money and how could the rich people not be happy because I don't have money and I'm sad so obviously the rich people have money and they're happy. I don't want to explain things too much because I would recommend that you read this book and I don't want to take anything away from you but just I know that some people probably aren't going to read this book so I just want to give a little bit of explanation. Basically one day he finds himself at a magic shop where he meets this woman named Ruth and Ruth basically just sees something in him and Ruth asks him to come back to the magic shop every single day for a few I think it's six weeks. Ruth asks him to come back to the magic shop every single day so that she can teach him some really really special magic. Now it's not the magic that he was anticipating or hoping for but it definitely is the kind of magic that you kind of need basically she's kind of taking him through steps of mindfulness and how to calm the body and how to calm the brain and after every single chapter you're also left with Ruth's tips so after every chapter he goes through Ruth's tips on basically how to relax your body and relax your mind and kind of find this peace and open your heart so that you can basically follow along these tips if you would like to do so as well. You can tell how anxious he is through little things. Ruth basically asks him to relax his toes and his mind goes from I'm going to relax my toes to what if she starves me to death? And he can't really understand why but Magic Shop becomes a safe space for him. And so that's where I think Magic Shop really ties into the song is it's the safe place. It's the place that you can escape from all of your troubles 
you don't have to think about your rough family life at home you can just be in the present and relax in the present and really just give up all your anxiety there while he's still going to the magic shop and while he's still learning this magic you can really see how it is benefiting him through the stories that he tells when he's outside of magic shop whether it's against bullies or whether it's uh, against his parents you can just really see how this mindfulness is helping him so so much the second part of the book is after magic shop and it's basically when he's going into the world using the methods of magic shop as a kind of manifestation but slowly he kind of loses the purity that he had and he kind of becomes arrogant you see him become the neurosurgeon that he is and how kind of focused he is on money will make me happy this will make me happy once i'm here i will be happy that kind of mentality it's something that ruth did warn him about which is you can attain your goals but try not to lose yourself along the way and he mentions how while he's becoming a doctor and while he's doing all these things he's very very kind of self-entitled in it he's like you're going to give me the chance i need this um there's no way you're going to reject me those kind of mentality and along the way he stops doing the mindfulness and he stops taking care of himself the third part of the book is when he's kind of realizing what ruth was actually teaching him which is well 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 into his adult life um he kind he kind of loses everything but through losing everything he realizes everything he actually needed he goes through like losing a lot of money realizing why he wanted the career that he wanted realizing that he wasn't the best person that he could be realizing that he was indulging in things that didn't actually make him happy and he also goes through the process of him starting up sea care which is connected with stanford sea care is the center for compassion and altruism research and education so it's basically the idea that compassion and human interaction is actually just as important for your health as exercising and having a healthy diet that this is something that we as people really really need but we as people just in our own modern society don't indulge in too often it's also crazy how people who start off with nothing feel like they want to give back the most people who start off with everything don't realize how much they have and how much they could be giving back like even without magic shop he had a really really remarkable life to go from this poor child living in such a difficult family home and to go from that to being a neurosurgeon and at one stage being incredibly 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 wealthy is just it's amazing but it's I, you have to try to not get caught up too much in that because that is the overindulged self that he is trying to kind of talk against throughout the book he speaks in this really matter of fact language but it just presents itself in different ways as a young child it's anxiousness it's naivety it's curiosity it's just how young children think young children just go from this thought to this thought to this thought and that's kind of how he spoke in the book like so ruth will tell him to do something and be like do you understand and he'll say yes and then in his head he'll be like i didn't understand but i just thought that she wanted me to understand so i said i understood it's just that kind of matter of fact language no kind of sprinkling around things no kind of dancing around anything just matter of fact in the second part as an adult which by the way in the second part it's towards the end that his life kind of starts falling apart but getting better in the second part his matter of fact language is i deserve this i am not going to accept anything less than this and i'm not saying that's a bad mentality to have it's just that he became incredibly arrogant um self-entitled and that's where his matter of fact language came in here you are not going to reject me you are going to give me everything that I want because I deserve everything that I want. I'm going to get everything that I want, no matter what kind of thing. And then past that, once he's kind of developing past that arrogance, the matter of fact comes into compassion is kind of the only way. And it's still a kind of matter of fact tone. And I really, really enjoyed that language. And I really liked like pointing that out in the book. And there are also like odd stories sprinkled in sometimes very sad stories and it's kind of like what is this why is this relevant to the book why are you telling me about these poor people poor patients of yours that are just 
breaking my heart. The stories are breaking my heart. There was a de devastating story about a pregnant woman. There was a really sad story about an opera singer. And it's just these stories that are sprinkled in throughout, but they are kind of alluding to his own personal life in the future kind of thing. I really, really don't want to go too in depth into the stories just because I just want you to read this book. I want you to experience this book for yourself. So I don't want to go too, too, too much into detail. So I don't, you know, spoil anything. There are a few passages that I would like to read to you here today. So I'm going to tell you what pages they're on in case you want to buy this book. Some of these passages that I'm gonna be reading to you, some of them I just really like. I think that the language is beautiful. I think that he has a really great way of language and I just wanted to share them with you. So this is on page 27 and this is basically him talking about his difficult childhood at home. I pretended I was lucky because I didn't have anyone to bother me, to tell me to do my homework, wake me up for school, or tell me what to wear. But I was only pretending. Teenagers crave freedom, but only if they're standing on a base that is stable and secure. That line in particular, teenagers crave freedom, but only if they're standing on a base that is stable and secure. It made so much sense. You know, I think the way poor children rebel and how rich kids rebel are two different things. Poor kids, and whether that's poor in like money or um, parental figures, like that is still depriving you of something. If you have no parental figure to actually take care of you, that is depriving you of something. If you're deprived, you might rebel because you want stability. You want a family. You want somewhere to feel safe. If you are the rich kid who has the family and the parents, you're rebelling because it's something else to do. Look how much I wrote on that page. Anyway, never mind. Okay, this is on page 85. Um, it's about his encounter with a bully where he is kind of using the positivity that he gained from Magic Shop to help someone else. A child is being bullied and he's standing up for this child. So the bully is basically threatening him like, I am going to punch you, you are going down. Um, and for a second our eyes locked together and I saw him and he knew I saw him. I saw his own pain and fear, a pain and fear that he tried to hide with his bullying. I mean, I don't think you could say it any better. This next page is on page 109 and it's kind of about magic and why we do magic and why we like magic as people. This is what makes a magician great. He believes the story he tells to the audience, he believes in himself. It's strengthen your conviction. If you're a performer, you're gonna be 10 times a better performer if you just show confidence. Some of the greatest singers aren't the greatest singers because they have the best vocals, but it's their stage presence and how they can perform to an audience and how they can convince an audience and what they're saying and how they can connect. And that's really, 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 really important. And magicians are just performers, you know, they're connecting you and they believe in themselves. They don't have to convince you to believe them because they believe in themselves. A trick is never done at the expense of the audience. Magic isn't a hustle or a con. A real magician transports the audience to a world where anything is possible, everything is real, and the unbelievable become believable. I think that is such, such, such an amazing line. I think sometimes we think of magic as this con because it looks like magic, but really it's just a trick of the eye, it's just a trick of the hand, but you're not actually tricking the audience. You're just kind of engaging them in a different way. Okay, this next line that I'm about to tell you, it's on page 160. It's not funny. It's just that I think the world is so small and the fact that I bought this book because it was based on a, sorry, a BTS song was based on it. And then there's this line, his face was contorted and his eyes were dark and wild. And I was just like, dark and wild, dark and wild. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's, 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 it's a very intense scene. Like this is not a funny scene. Um, his dad is in a drunken state um, and he is kind of terrified and he is, whoo, mm. it's not a funny scene, but that was kind of like a hee 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 moment, you know? This next line is on page 176. 
Sometimes rules and criteria are critically important, but often they are arbitrary and act only to sift through numbers and limit opportunity. I was stabbing my legs almost there. Oh my God. Anybody who has ever applied to college feels this way. Oftentimes you're not let into college on your ability. You're let in there because, okay, we have this many spots, this many people who want it, this top group are the best group, so they're getting in. Really, it's like, you don't need a H1 in maths to study English. But if the H1 is gonna get you the points, oh, sorry, H1, Irish grading systems are a little bit different. Uh, H is O's and F's, and then one, two, eight. I think it's one, three, eight, yeah. I don't need a H1 in maths to study English. And I didn't get a H1 in maths, I got no three. Um, you don't need a, you don't need a H1 in maths to study English or music, but if that's gonna help you get into the course, get the H1 in maths, even though it's going to serve you no purpose. This next thing is on page 203, and this, I really love this, it's about versions of yourself. I mentioned it in a previous video. I really feel like sometimes I was reading and I was thinking, hmm, how would Namjoon have read this? I really think that Namjoon would have liked this part. I, I think that he it would have resonated with him. As a lost and hopeless boy, I died in a magic shop. The young man who was both ashamed and terrified of his father, the one who had struck him and got his blood on his hands, died the day he went off to college. And although I didn't know it at the time of my accident, eventually the arrogant, egotistical neurosurgeon I would become would also suffer his own death. We can die a thousand times in this lifetime. And that is one of the greatest gifts of being alive. I really, really love that line. To me, it's saying that you do not have, to, your past self, your past self exists. And it exists kind of in this parallel. You do not have to be defined by that past self, but they exist. It's kind of different stages of our lives, you know. I was in primary school and that version of me existed, but she's no longer who I am today. I was in secondary school, she existed. That version of me no longer exists today and you just continue. And usually there are significant parts of your life that help change and shift something in you. All these different versions of yourself die so that you can become the person that you are today. And eventually the person you are today will also die for you to become the person that you are meant to be, the person who you will be in the future. So profound, isn't it? Oh, this isn't really relevant, but on page 215, there was a mention of a hedge fund. If this had happened, if I had read this book two weeks ago, I wouldn't have known what a hedge fund was, how the world works. <laughs> I still don't really know what a hedge fund is, but I know a bit more than I would have if I read this without knowing what a hedge fund was. This next thing is on page 229, to do with the mind and the heart. The mind wants to divide and keep us separate. It will teach us to compare ourselves to differentiate ourselves, to get what's ours because there's only so much to go around. The heart, however, wants to connect us and wants to share. It wants to show us that there are no differences and that ultimately we are all the same. The heart has an intelligence of its own and if we learn from it, we will know that we keep what we have only by giving it away. If we want to be happy, we make others happy. If we want to love, we have to give love. If we want joy, we need to make others joyful. If we want forgiveness, we have to forgive. If we want peace, we have to create it in the world around us. If we want our wounds to be healed, we have to heal others. It was time for me to focus again on being a doctor. I just think that's beautiful. I just think that the way he worded that was absolutely incredible. And I don't know how you can read that and not be like connected with it and just click. Something is beautiful there. And that acknowledgement of like, we can't just expect everything to come to us without ever giving it anything in return. This next piece is on 251 and it actually mentions music. So I really just thought that I wanted to show this with you here. Like meditation techniques, music reduces heart rate, decreases stress and lowers blood pressure. 
this calming effect happens not only for the patient, but for the surgeon as well. He's just talking about surgery. But like, that is true. But like, I'm, I'm read, I read this book because I connected with music. You know, it was something that could calm me. It was something that I connected with. It was something that I enjoyed. And so I wanted to go out and read a book that took me 10 days to read based on a song that takes me three minutes to listen to. <laughs> The last piece that I wanted to read for you here today is on page 260 and it is about Darwin, Darwinism. Many misinterpret Darwin by implying that survival of the fittest means the survival of the strongest and most ruthless, when in fact it is survival of the kindest and most cooperative that ensures the survival of a species in the long term. If I'm only looking out for me, I do not care about anybody else in the world and everybody else in the world is dead. Me as a species, as a human species, I have ceased to exist before I'm even dead because there is a point of a species being functionally extinct, which means there's not enough of you for you to produce viable offspring to continue the species no point in looking out for oneself and oneself only because if you only look out for oneself the group humanity cannot continue <laughs> so now that i've just spoken a little bit about the book i'm gonna go through the bts lyrics i know that you're hesitating because even if you say the truth in the end it will all return as scars i'm not going to say anything blatant like fine strength I will let you hear my story, let you hear it. Now, I mean like as scars, in the end it will return as scars because scars do fade over time, but usually they don't like leave, leave forever. Like once you have a scar on your body, it's usually kind of there. And the thing like find strength, it's like one of those like cheesy Instagram motivational text posts where it's like, it all falls flat, like, oh, find strength, oh, that's nice. But it kind of like falls flat because it's just a word that kind of falls off. Um, and then I really like the last bit, uh, I will let you hear my story, let you hear it, because that's what I felt like with the book, is that he shows you his story, the good, the bad, and the ugly, to show you the message as a whole, which is compassion, and how important compassion is. And you need to see the ugly part of him to see how amazing the good parts of them are. What did I say? I said you'd win, didn't I? I couldn't believe it. Could I win? This miracle that isn't a miracle, did we make it? It's kind of, there's a little bit of self-doubt in here. There's kind of not knowing your power. Um, this miracle that isn't a miracle, nothing is actually accidental. Like, there's no good look and bad look. My mom was telling me recently, there's no good look and bad look because there was this, um, she was reading this book and in this book, um, it was written by a doctor and he mentions this woman who survived the sinking of the Titanic and also two other boat sinkings by the same line. I don't know what it was called. Like she could seem like the most unlucky person in the world. She was on three ships as they sunk, but also the luckiest person in the world because she survived them all. But she was a nurse and she was employed by that company and that's why she was on so many sinking ships. It wasn't because she was just unlucky, it was because that was her job. I was here, you were the only one that made your way to me. I really thought, like I don't, maybe it wasn't what they intended, but to me that was Ruth. You know, this was this hopeless little boy and this amazingly compassionate kind woman who gained nothing from taking in this boy and teaching him about compassion and teaching him about um, manifestation and mindfulness and calming of the body, she didn't gain anything from that. She just wanted that positivity to continue on. You made your way to me. She was the one who reached out to him. She reached out to someone in their time of need. I do believe your galaxy. I want to listen to your melody. Your melody is your story. Um, your star is in the Milky Way don't forget that I found you anyways at the end of my despair. You're the last reason for me who was standing at the edge of a cliff, like life-saving, literally, literally life-saving. Live. <laughs> you know, I love that part where like uh, Namjoon goes through this like really like 
beautiful, intense rap, and you can really hear all of his words, all of the syllables, you can feel it all, and then it just ends, live. I love it. On days I hate being myself, days I want to disappear forever, let's make a door in your heart, and that's the little BTS symbol, which is very similar to this thing at the front here, the little BTS symbol is just like doors. Open the door and this place will await. It's okay to believe the magic shop will comfort you. It's okay to have this place that makes you feel safe. This place that makes you feel comfortable. This place that's peaceful for you. This place where you can kind of go and give your anxiety. While drinking a glass of hot tea, which I mean, it, that's very comforting to me. I love tea. Tea is my favorite. <laughs> and looking up at the Milky Way, the Milky Way to me symbolizes like infinite growth, how big the world is, how small you are, you'll be all right. Oh, this here is the magic shop. So show me, I'll show you. So show me, I'll show you. So show me, I'll show you, show you, show you. I'll show you the magic. I'll show you this incredible, incredible magic. Like a rose when blooming, like cherry blossoms when being scattered in the wind, like morning glory when fading, like that beautiful moment. This is just beautiful imagery. Like the imagery here is beautiful. It's like birth of new life and um, birth of color. I always want to be the best. I was so impatient and always so restless. Comparing myself with others became my daily life. This really, that little boy who thought that the rich people had it all and the rich people were all happy. My greed that was my weapon suffocated me and also became a leash. You want something so bad, you actually end up kind of sabotaging yourself. But looking back on it now, truthfully, I feel like it's not true that I wanted to be the best. I wanted to become your comfort and move your heart. I wanted to take away your sadness and pain. So that's where like, say for BTS wanting to be hugely successful musicians, they didn't just want to be hugely successful musicians, just for the sake of it. They wanted to say something. They want. They had something to say and they wanted to help people. It just so happens that being really, really famous helped them. Then it's the pre-chorus again and the chorus, the bridge here. Would you believe me if I said that I was scared of everything too? It's kind of like the facade, like we're all scared. There's no person in the world that doesn't have something to worry about. It's not the greatest emotion to feel, worry is kind of this pointless emotion. All the sincerity, the remaining times, all your answers are in this place you found, in your Milky Way, inside your heart, heart. <laughs> inside your heart, um, in your Milky Way, in your infinite, infinite potential, your infinite possibilities. You're infinite, yeah? <laughs> What's that, John Green? We were infinite. No, that was the first thing the wallflower, wasn't it? You gave me the best of me, so you'll give you the best of you. You found me, you knew me, you gave me the best of me, so you'll give you the best of you. You'll find it, the galaxy inside you. All the potential, every, every, everything that you can be. Also, that was one of the things that Ruth said to him. She was like, I'm gonna give you this magic. I'm gonna show you how to do this magic. All I'm asking is that you give it to someone else. And he gave it to many, many people in the form of a book. This is such an amazing song. Uh, I really, really hope that you've all heard the song. Uh, this is such an amazing song, such an amazing book. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you check them both out. They're just really, really touching and I just think that they're kind of amazing and beautiful. Anyway, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my post notifications. Remember, you say genius. I think Min Yoongi. All my socials will be linked down below and I'll see you when I see you. Okay, bye.